Yes, hello and uh, good morning to everyone. I'm uh, Anupam Dutta from the Department of English, uh, Barbhai College. Uh, I extend a warm welcome to all of you to this webinar on the use of online e-resources. This webinar is organized by IQSC Barbhai College, uh, Barbhai College Library in association with Assam College Librarians Association. Uh, we are in a difficult situation uh, arising out of the spread of COVID-19 pandemic and all of us have been facing new problems every day in, in, in different spheres of life. One of the areas that have suffered immensely is uh, education and the institutions, teachers, students, educational policymakers are up against unprecedented challenges as far as continuing education and research in the regular mode is concerned. However, the silver lining uh, around this seeming darkness is that we have actually now realized how important it is to adopt the online mode of teaching and learning and to make use of online and digital resources. Uh, and uh, most of us are willing to take to it seriously. Even UGC has said that 50% of the syllabi uh, may be delivered through online mode. And, uh, you know, there is, however, uh, certain issues to it. And uh, there is no denying that uh, there are certain nagging issues as far as effective implementation of the online mode of teaching, learning, and use of online resources is concerned. And uh, despite UGC's advisories to explore the online resources for teaching, learning, and research, uh, these issues are, however, always there. Issues like the availability of digital infrastructure throughout the country, availability of sufficient resources at different levels and uh, in different disciplines. But sooner or later, these issues will uh, get sorted out. Therefore, we teachers and academics will have to effectively prepare ourselves to acquire the capability of importing education uh, and continuing research in a mode that will incorporate the use of online and digital resources for teaching, learning and research to a large extent. It is with these ideas in view that uh, we decided to organize this seminar uh, with support uh, from Assam College Librarians Association. As you must have understood that uh, this seminar is just uh, a sort of a systematic initiation into the domain of online resources which can be used for teaching, learning, and research. We have, uh, for this webinar, experts as resource persons who will deliver presentations on the subject, and I hope the participants uh, will be benefited from uh, the deliberations in this seminar. Before going into the technical session, may I now request the principal of Borva College, Mr. Yunusar Rahman, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you. Rahman, sir. Namaskar.
I formally welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Raman, sir. Okay. Thank you, Raman, sir. Uh, Thank you. We are fortunate to have uh, with us here in this webinar the General Secretary of Assam College Librarians Association and uh, the librarian of Casey Das Thomas College, Dr. Prakanta Kumar Dekha. I welcome him to the webinar. And may I now request Dr. Prakanta Kumar Dekha to briefly address the webinar. Hello, Vinder. Yes. Hello. Yes. Prakanta. Ah, Vinder. Yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are audible. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, Please address. Honorable uh, Principal of Borbhak College, Mahabharat Anshu Raman Sir, Coordinator IQC Dr. Anupam Dutto, Business Person of today's program, Professor Sanjay Kumar Singh, Head of the Department Library Information Science and uh, Librarian in Charge, Guwahati, uh, KK Handy Library, Guwahati University, and Dr. Birinder Pal, ICT uh, Self Convener, as in uh, Librarian of Koliagor College, Respected Faculties of this College, and respected participants present in this webinar. On behalf of SLA, I welcome all of you this uh, amazing program. Uh, as our uh, Honorable Dr. Sir I mentioned that it is now all of you that due to pandemic situation, the society is huge loss in the entire world. All the education institutions are closed for the last two and a half months across the country. Our students continue uh, student community are badly affected according to uh, latest survey of UNESCO, uh, not only India, and their goal, almost uh, 1.5 billion students and youth across the uh, affected in uh, school, college, university closure due to the COVID-19 explosion. Uh, this has compelled all the educational institutions across the world to adopt teaching and online, online platform. Uh, courses are conducting online, uh, examination are conducted online and assignment etc. submitted to email and other media. The lockdown has accelerated uh, adoption of more digital technology. This is an ideal time to experiment and deploy new tools and techniques to make uh, education uh, delivery meaningful to students. It is sounds to be more efficient and uh, productivity while developing new and improve professional skills, knowledge to online uh, learning assessment. Here the uh, teachers should need a chance their uh, teaching method and adopt to uh, resolve technology center teaching. That uh, teachers should establish uh, themselves as uh, competent uh, individuals who can deliver what the students accept. Uh, the, uh, established in a uh, to establish in which a teacher should be active a research and research publication uh, to put on experience skills and online teaching. Uh, looking at these uh, from university college and uh, schools are forced to start the government of India as well as state government and private players have uh, regularly been published information on various initiative undertaking by uh, ministries and various department and MSRD, Department of Technical Education, and CRT, and other to support and benefit of uh, youth as well as our students. Uh, there are many platforms uh, created to enable online education in India. These are supported by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, MSRD, the National Council of Education, Research and Training, and CRT, and Development Technical Education. Uh, there are also initiatives uh, like uh, e Patsala, uh, e Patsala, Piswayam, online courses for research and any NEAT uh, enhancing employability. Other online platforms aim to increase uh, connectivity with uh, institutional and accessibility to uh, content. Uh, these are uh, utilized for course material and uh, classes and learning of online modules. They include the national uh, project on technology enhanced uh, Learning and PTL National Knowledge Network NPN, and National Academic uh, Depository NAD among others. 
in view of all this the assam college library association sna has taken up series of programs for capacity building of college librarians research and academic uh, partnership with online initiative our main objective is to create awareness uh, on the uh, uh, use of uh, online resources as directed by msd among the library professional research principal and all academic community we are providing this service voluntary and it is a modest contribution from us towards academic community of assam i would like to request all participants uh, to subscribe our uh, sla youtube channel where we have already uploaded uh, plenty of different educational video for the academic community uh, that may help all of you uh, to explore different online resources and i am happy to inform you that during this lockdown period already we have successfully completed uh, 13 number of webinars on awareness of uses of different resources of different college institution of assam all the technical needs and handled by the artificial team of the association under the leadership of dr vijayan uh, dopal uh, uh, in future also we are planning to provide some similar online program for the teachers and students of the college uh, i offer my heartfelt thanks to the research person professor sanjay kumar singh and uh, dr vijayan dopal library pilagor college and coordinator of, of artificial uh, uh, sla level of collaborator college collaborator uh, college under this contribution it is not possible for me to organize this type of program uh, the whole research portion will be covered most of uh, digital research like sudbanga uh, easy pathala sha isu chindu and list project open bank ndl open sources etc hope you will uh, you all will be benefited from to this session and i in i would like to offer my special gratitude to principal Mumbai and Sir Rohan Sir for giving us the support such a special thanks to Kishore College of Librarian. He is a young and uh, energetic uh, librarian and he is an active member of our CLA. And we feel honored to organize this program uh, in one of the oldest higher education institution of Assam, which is situated in my native village in Gorwa. And at the end, I once again welcome all the participants uh, to this uh, webinar. And I am sure all of you will be benefited from uh, this online resources. Uh, thank you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank Dr. Prafanta Kumar Dekka. Uh, thank, thank you for your address. You have very nicely summarized in a very brief space how important uh, is the is the any use of online resources for our teachers and. what are the online resources available on the web and how uh, we can make use of those resources thank you again once again for your address uh, we are now beginning the technical session uh, let me inform the participants uh, if you want to ask any question to our resource persons you can type them uh, in the chat box at the end of the technical sessions uh, resource persons will answer those questions Uh, now to take to engage the first part of the technical session we have with us dr sanjay kumar singh uh, before i invite him to speak let me briefly introduce him dr sanjay kumar singh is presently a professor and the head in the department of library and information science got university and uh, is a research supervisor of uh, the university professor singh served as assistant coordinator of igno gohati center for 8 years since 2001 and also served as uh, an academic counselor in the center uh, he has been continuously associated with different ugc uh, human resource development centers as a resource person for different refresher courses orientation program and research methodology courses dr singh has uh, published widely in many national and international journals of repute He has also been an important member in the editorial boards, review boards, and advisory boards of a number of reputed journals. With these words, I welcome Dr. Sanjay Kumar Singh, and may I now request Professor Singh to give his presentation. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you, Dr. Anupam Dutta. So, good morning and namaskar to all of you uh, in this COVID pandemic lockdown period, and uh, as you. Uh, Dr. Datta has already mentioned uh, during his speech uh, regarding these uh, activities which uh, 
we are facing nowadays and dr prashant kumar deka uh, also uh, discussed many things related to this webinar and how it is being conducted etc and with the help of uh, his ict team say uh, led, uh, led by dr birender pal etc so once again good morning to all of you and uh, at the very beginning just uh, i would like to address uh, uh, mr mohammad unsur rahman honorable principal in charge of uh, barbha college the entire ict IC, uh, iqc team of uh, i barbha college along with uh, dr pom datta uh, then uh, dr kishor kalita the librarian of uh, barbha college then my friend prashant kumar deka who is the architect behind such type of activities and uh, dr brinder pal who is assisting him to organize and bringing such type of activities to you both of them are working day and night uh, to uh, bring this type of things in front of you every day uh, in the morning from 11 am to so till now as the secretary has already mentioned that uh, uh, 13 colleges they have covered uh, in the entire state of, state of assam and there are lots of activities they are going to perform uh, in the coming days so as far as i know Uh, both of them are basically uh, full with uh, all the activities uh, up to uh, june we can say that or uh, till the lockdown continues so it is they are providing this service voluntarily i can say that uh, just to ab- create awareness among the teaching community among the librarian friends among the students among the research scholars from this uh, uh, colleges from the universities from the schools also Uh, so many are directly or indirectly associated with this program so thanks to both the person dr deka and dr pal and let me come back to our area of topic awareness program on online e resources yes both of them are doing good in their uh, performances etc and this lockdown has compelled us to uh, think uh, in different way today the lockdown has taught us how to handle the computer those who are running away from the computer those who are not coming near to the system itself but they are compelled and they are forced to use this technology to survive in the society to the pass the valuable time during this 50 60 days uh, 70 80 days we have we are passing through or going through so here to start with just i would like to quote the father of nation uh, mahatma gandhi that uh, my heart is drawn backwards and forwards between the spinning wheels of the book spinning is spinning creating making threads etc so when you talk about the books so today the books are also being spinned and we are having the new form of books new form of resources available with us we call it electronic resources we call it digital books we call it electronic book electronic journals whatever it is so the resources are nowadays available in the digital format in front of us and to start with such type of things just you all of you know it very well and you are very much familiar with this type of technology being used and all of you some of you must have done such type of attended such some courses also like short term courses like uh, faculty development programs etc through the online mode and some of you might have also done attended some uh, classes of the swayam platform also since so these are all electronic resources or digital resources what we can call it so this covid has compelled us as first point here is the time and tide wait for none so time is valuable we do not work wait for the time but it's coming to your way you accept it and you start utilizing for your academic purpose because ultimately unless the teachers are learning teachers are using they then only they can educate their student they can impart the education to their students so time is changing very fast and we have to grasp all the time so there are sea changes you can say that tremendous changes in the inverse of knowledge so whole inverse of knowledge We, if we take the example, there is no area untouched. There is no area left out in the subjects. As all of you know, that uh, Ram Dhenu we have seen in your childhood, or even also in the beginning season, Ram Dhenu. Uh, uh, we that the seven colors are having that in the Ram Dhenu, and now in the computers we are having three colors. So when you mixing these three colors or seven colors, each among themselves, they will finding n number of colors. So like that, the knowledge is spreading in that way. you are mixing the subject subjects in different way by just like of that of color and every day you are getting new subject even some subjects are there you have never heard that name so that some subjects are coming up in the society and that are being used widely so when you what some whatever the subjects are coming there must be some resources there must be some literatures either in the form of a journal or in the form of a book so earlier we were completely depending upon the 
printed technology, printed books, printed journals. Now all those things are converted into digital format. So we call it e-resources in the offline mode, in the online mode. So libraries are also not untouched. Libraries also have provided the services for that. And side by side, all our all professionals or all intelligent peoples are librarian nowadays among themselves. Because you are searching anything in the Google, you are searching anything through any of the search engines and you are getting the information. But behind that, behind that, certain things are working. So let me cite just a few, one minute, something like that. That Let me cite example with the various revolutions. All of you know that there are various revolutions have already taken place in our country as well as in the world. In our country, we know that in the beginning we had white revolution, then green revolution, and you may be knowing uh, that uh, during that time, the Prime Minister of India, Lal Bahadur Shastri ji, he has given us Jai Jaman, Jai Kisan. Then later on, when the uh, Modi ji became the Prime Minister, the four five years back, he told that Jai Jaman, Jai Kisan, and Jai Vigyan. He has added science and technology to that. And just last year, he has added that Jai Anusandhan, Jai Jaman, Jai Kisan, Jai Vigyan, and Jai Anusandhan. Anusandhan is research. So we have to depend upon the research. Make India. Technology is coming. Think globally, act locally, that type of concept we are getting nowadays. So during this 50, 60 days, 70 days, this situation, we are really utilizing that situation and we are moving, taking ourselves in different directions. So let me cite with these revolutions as all of you know it, because all of you are teacher. So in 1700s, the first industrial revolution took place where the steam engine was invented. Then in the 1800s, this is the most important inventions. Then in the 1800, the second in the industrial revolution where electricity was generated, that we are totally dependent upon electricity. If there is no electricity, there is no power, we cannot survive in this changing and technologically changing world. That is the most important thing we have to think in different ways. Next is in 1990s, uh, during the third industrial revolution, the computing, the digital technology, digital device, computer, uh, your all uh, electronic gadgets etc., came up in the market with the like the floods etc during this time and the television technology the internet technology the digital technology started functioning properly and we are using it we are now become we have now become the slave of this technology you can say that without mobile phone without your television and assets we are not able to survive so mobile phone at the time of sleeping at the time of getting up from the bed every will, will find many people are using this mobile phone for the different activities some of them are using for academic purpose some of them are just for passing the time some of them just communication of the information like that now we are having in 2000 we are in 2020 so in the 2000 today that is you can say that today uh, the artificial intelligence we are talking about the artificial intelligence we are talking about the 5g the china is talking about the 7g with 5g not yet reached in our country but 7G, China is talking about. So see the development in science and technology because of such type of revolutions coming our way. So in this technology, we'll have 3D technology, 3D printing technology, then autonomous vehicle, etc. We have seen already some scientific development has already taken place. Then robotic information, etc. Virtual reality mode will be applicable, applicable in more better way, you can say that. So these are some of the changes which are very, very important in our day-to-day -day activities. So this uh, during this time, uh, about life cycle is also there. Everything has some life cycle. You have studied in your childhood in the biology paper what is the life cycle, life cycle, human being, life cycle, or any, any living organisms. So at present, about life cycle, academic life cycle, as well as the job oriented life cycle. If I cite, I, I, I can try to make you understand uh, that our life cycle is in this way. Now, this is the picture layout of the life cycle of ours, where we, learn, we are learning in the school days, in the colleges days, then after getting the qualification, getting the degree, we are joining in a work. And after that, we are super after providing or rendering our service, providing our service, and then we are retiring from our services. But in between, there are many things to know about. So whatever you have learned in the beginning, in the school days or college days, you feel you will find nowadays that become obsolete nowadays. Just a simple example that when this computer came to our country, came to human knowledge. So during that time, you have not studied in the school days what is computer, what are the advantages of computer, what are the disadvantages of computer. But situation has compelled you to know about the computer. That means whatever you have learned in the initial days, you forget it, unlearn it, and then again you relearn the new things. That is the main concept we are surviving now, we are dealing with now. So that is very, very important in everybody's concept nowadays. So this is our life cycle that now whatever you learn it, unlearn that, relearn that, and render service, provide service to your community in different ways.
So this I mean to say here, now the new role, but what will be the word, new role in this technological changing world? So see here, traditional jobs, some of you are librarians, some of you are teachers, some of you are students, some of you are research scholars, some of you are businessmen, some of you are technocrats, some of you are FPCN. So all are having their own and different uh, job descriptions. So traditional jobs, they are calling that this traditional job. But during this COVID period, we are associated with the new responsibilities. So for teachers, for the students, the new responsibility are this because of that you are sitting that part of the system. I am sitting this part of the system, and, but we are facing each other in this technology. And after the COVID period, what will be the new job title? The best judge will be yourself. You can judge yourself that traditional job, new responsibility, and what will be the new job title. So only time will say, I'm not going to define that one. So basically, when you are talking uh, about uh, these electronic resources, etc., so that can be made available through the e-learning. You know how to first. You know how to uh, re uh, write A B C D. Then you can read the book, etc. So that is the e-learning technology system. You have to know it. So anything in the web-based form, anything in the digital form, which is commonly referred for as e-learning or online learning. You are downloading anything, directly reading anything, and their purpose is that. You have you are learning something. You are getting some certificate courses. You are getting some diploma courses. You are getting some degree courses through this method, and there are various platform for that. So, learning, utilizing digital technologies to access educational resources outside the conventional classroom system is the e-learning, and we are now many of us are using it. See the example, the FDP, FDP program, faculty development program. Earlier, you have to go to the HRDC center or any of the same universities or institutions where that program was conducted face-to-face -face mode, classroom mode. But now through the uh, this online mode, through this e-learning mode, you can attend that FDP program. And every day when you open the system, somewhere you will get some information related to some webinars are going on, some FDP programs are going on. If you are attending two such type of FDP, FDP program recognized by the UGC, then you do not go for any uh, refresher course, etc. That is being equivalent to the refresher course. So there are lots of utilities utility of such type of things. So digital platform, are providing course, program, or degree which are delivered entirely through the online mode, and which, if you are attending it, you are getting the certificates like that. So I'm not going in detail about the e-learning because it will take hours together to talk on that. So just something I'm touching on that area. Then there are some advantages of this. Some of the advantages there are many advantages are there, many disadvantages are there. But I'm confined with just two or three advantages which are very important. Just like the first here, it is mentioned in your slide PPT is that it is a very efficient way of delivering course online. Yes, quick, quicker, more efficient way with different graphics, designs, etc. can be imparted and you will be very much interested on such type of things. Then due to, in, due to convenience and flexibility, the resources are available from anywhere at any time. So you can attend that program from your home or any place as per your requirement. Maybe in your office, maybe in your any place according to your convenience. Everyone, this particular point, everyone maybe students, maybe researchers, maybe teachers can take advantage of web-based learning. And we are doing many students, many teachers are getting themselves updated every now and then through this e-learning mode. And today it is a great way of way for learners to learn at their own pace, processing materials without being held back, hurried by peers, etc. This is just, there are many advantages, just I'm confined with three to four advantages, etc. Now let us go to some disadvantages also, because everything has advantage and disadvantage. If you will talk only advantage and forget about disadvantage, then it is not a good sign. So here, first of first disadvantage, I'm not talking about e-learning, I'm talking about, uh, suppose, uh, telling that, citing the example that we are in front of the system, all of you are in front of the, some of you are in front of the laptop, some of you are in, you are in front of the desktop, some of you are in front of the mobile phones. Now see the dangerous thing, that radiation coming out from mobile phone. How much danger that is for our health, eye problem, spondylitis problem, other health hazards like that. Thing. So that means radiations are coming out, which is, which is creating danger for each and everyone. That is one of the biggest disadvantages I can say. Yes, if you are using Kindle, Kindle ebook reader, something like that device, then there are red, less radiations. In mobile phone also, smartphone also, there is a mode of reading mode. If you're pointing out, switching on that reading mode, then there are less radiations. Otherwise, radiations are coming in a big way and you are going to be affected from this. So like that, this is common disadvantage. Now I'll come back to e-learning disadvantage. E-learning lacks face-to-face -face communication. But virtually we are face-to-face. -face. You are that side, I am this side, and we are seeing to each other. But real, real mode, it is... Uh, 
lacks it lacks face to face communication then a lack of pressure is a disadvantage in the sense that it is caused causes students to abandon their studies more easily suppose see disadvantage is there students abandon their study in the sense that suppose you are online i am also online i am delivering you are listening but uh, if uh, someone switch up the video audio is already muted now whether you are attending or not how can we say whether bus uh, stopping your video you are going here and there again after 10 minutes you are coming and just showing your presence again you two minutes you show your presence again go back and again after half an hour you come and show your presence so that is not there that is one of the disadvantages here okay so constant nudging by teachers may be undesirable for many but it's an effective method of thing so teachers are always saying do this do that always creating problem giving good suggestions etc so uh, these things are you taken care of this so it can it can be also torturous this is one of the most important disadvantage i can cite here it can be torturous with seemingly, seemingly less uh, endless ppt slides that can make e learning seem categorical you have seen will find that many persons are there many resource persons are there many research scholar or students are there whoever gets any opportunity in front of the system or mic they start sort of talking and talking and they forget their time that whether five minutes was given to him or half an hour is given to him that is one of the problems so here also some of you will find some of the persons are preparing hundreds of slides and till the hundred number slides is complete they go on talking and speaking by the time the listeners or the person who are attending this become bored become irritated etc so it should not be like that online classes should be always attractive lively and it should be maximum of 30 minutes that is sufficient if 30 minutes you are doing that is sufficient so this is most important in uh, online courses so these are some of the dis disadvantages i have covered so come back to e resources e resources is the part related to the online learning because uh, online learning without resources cannot be complete so when you talk about the e resources anything in the form of electronic publishing electronic serials electronic journals electronic periodicals electronic books electronic documents can be considered as the e resources it may be in the online mode it may be in the offline mode if you are reading online through the web it is online resources if you are reading offline after downloading it it is offline resources so simple definition it is nothing but a bundle of group of information which are disseminated in the digital form or electronic form and produced published and distributed in the digital environment or the electronic environment that is the simple example simple definition of the e resources there are various e resources you go and just write down in the google uh, the definition of e resources hundreds of e definition you will find in the e resources just to layman points of view i am just speaking that information giving that information only e resources are the digital version of print documents which are accessed through the exchange of hyperlinking now see here you, if you compare the printed document if you compare the print electronic resources electronic books or journals when this printed journal were coming suppose it was published in usa or uk or any other part of the country uh, other abroad so what happened when it was published it was coming to our hand after 3 or 4 months it was coming through the sea routes so by the time the primary information which was containing in that journals were lost so it is meaningless especially in the science and technology but the beauty of these online resources or digital resources or electronic resources is that the moment it is published moment it is released you are able to access it earlier one copy you were purchasing procuring one person can read at a time now at, as per your agreement etc n number of people can read at a time together so that is the beauty of you are paying for one journal but 10 people 20 people it depends upon the agreement license agreement etc the person can read that is one of the most important beauty of these online resources and uh, as it is ob obvious that it has become the largest and the quickest growing segment of the digital collection throughout the world and it is every day changing we don't have any measuring rod to measure how many documents are being published throughout the world earlier in the british national bibliography or indian national bibliography we are having some information that in one year what are the number of publications published but nowadays since uh, 2010 onwards 30 june 2010 onwards when the ugc had made it mandatory that everybody should publish something books journals at a sorry articles research papers etc so that has brought another revolution in the academic fraternity and the academic fraternity they are compelled to contribute uh, uh, in the academic world in the form of writing in the journals writing books in either in the online form or in the 
print form so that is increasing the number so today we are seeing explosion of literatures not only explosion of population explosion of literatures and there is we don't have any record but there are some sites which are saying i'm so on particular point ppt uh, that one side is saying one e uh, open source is showing that 27 crore plus books are published uh, uh, available in that site and every minute 50 books are published online books are published but what is the again source what is the uh, information that 50 books are coming maybe less than that maybe more than that that figure is going and changing so this open access initiative the red color pointed thing which is citing here is the open access initiative has made it easier to reach in the hands of individual information seeker this has brought another revolution besides that uh, for colleges you are having endless program for universities you are having social Sindhu program where 10000 plus in social Sindhu wrote 10000 plus journals are there for journals are there and 31 lakh 35000 books are there in endless which is basically for the colleges etc where 6000 plus journals are there and 31 lakh 35000 books are there so out of this, I'm not saying all will be useful for you. It covers the entire subject, entire universe of knowledge. But even the 1%, 2%, 5% are maybe useful for you. And if you are using it, you are downloading it, you are self-sufficient in that case in the e-resources. So uh, your information provided, e-resources provided to the consortium, e-resources provided to the open access modes are all valuable in this way or that way to all of you. As we have talked about that uh, offline sources or online sources etc so online i have already mentioned offline what are the sources where you will keep that where you will preserve that these are some of the points like cd roms dvd roms hard disks electronic databases are there uh, then your magnetic drum magnetic disk microfilm microfish etc it is said in microfilm it can survive for 500 years microfilm can survive for 500 years but who has tested that microfilm Documents preserved in microfilm can survive for 500 years, but in ideal condition. Now, what is an ideal condition? Ideal condition means it should be preserved under line cave. Now, where is the artificial natural line cave? Artificial line cave has to be created. Artificial line has to be generated. So, in that line cave temperature, that means temperature like life cave has to be maintained, and you can keep there. Then that can last for 500 years. But who has tested that that will survive for 500 years? That is one of the biggest question coming to our way. So that is one of the important area. So forget about that 500 years, 400 years, 300 years. At present, we are having CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, hard disk, magnetic drum, etc. So these are the resources where we can keep this. But these also, this infrastructure or this hardware technology also goes and changing. So you have to change according to this. The moment it is changed, you have to go adopt the new technology. Just like the software you are using, that is going to change. That is also changing, so you are adopting the new software. So, in the same way, if you are not adopting the new software as well as the hardware technology, in that case, you after a few years will find nothing is there. Just for example, just I, I know, 20 years back, 15, uh, 30 years back, we had video cassettes and audio cassettes 15 years, 20 years back. Now, we cannot run that video cassette or audio cassette because of fungal attacks, etc., and the device is not there. So, what you are using it now, you are using chips, you are using pen drive, you are using CPD ROM, like that. So, that carrier should be also transformed into new generation, etc. So, here are some of the points like ETD electronic thesis and dissertations are there, open electronic thesis and dissertations are there, NDL, that is National Digital Library or Digital Library of India, which is uh, carried out by the IIT Kharagpur. And uh, this, uh, this will be shown you in live more demo, live demo will be given by. Dr. Bindar Pal, when he will present it. So, just I am giving you the information that open thesis, uh, this electronic thesis and dissertation, South Ganga project of the Implement Center is there. There, we are having 270,000 plus electronic thesis, uh, sorry, thesis in the digital form, full text thesis are there. So, that can be downloaded and that can be used by the academic fraternity, maybe researcher, maybe teachers, and it is available in all Indian languages where, where it is permissible to upload it and it is down, uh, uploaded only for those universities where signed the MOU, etc. And there are social media platforms also, institutional repositories also for individual colleges, individual institutions through which these e resources can be imparted, e resources can be disseminated. So, this is e Sud Sindhu. e Sud Sindhu already I have mentioned that 10,000 journals are there, 31 lakh 35,000 books are there, 22 resources and four databases are This you can get it from the www.infilibnet.ac.in at least once in 10 days or at least once in a fortnight if you are visiting that this site 
www.infinite.ht.in you will always get some new information and which is always will be, will be beneficial to all of you as you are related and associated yourself with the teaching this already i have told you that there is no area on trust where the e-resources are not available all the subjects covering in this entire world are having these e-resources nowadays now some let us highlight something related to open access e-resource management related things so here see need and attitude of the users are totally changed motivation of students for maximum utilization of resources so we are teachers we are teachers we have to teach our students we have to motivate our students now in the colleges you have seen that the credit system grading systems semester systems are being implied and applied and going full swing in going in full swing so you are always busy teachers are always busy students are found to be busy doing the assignments so it is now the duty of the teacher to know about the online resources available in their subjects in different online platforms and uh, you can guide your student these are the information which are available in the online format and you can access this even but at the time of giving some assignments you have to prepare a question in such a way that a student will not get directly in the textbook which is prescribed in the syllabus or which textbooks you are following it so the question should be framed in such a way that the students will be bound to use these online resources and it is very very important in today's context in the COVID uh, pandemic time because we have to fully dependent upon these online resources so duty of teachers are increasing duty of students are increasing students need some guidance need some clarification etc so they will be attracted towards that and they can start using this and they will start submitting the assignments to you that is that but side by side you assist the student don't download directly download it read it write and write from your own don't write copy don't write copying from that it is a violation of digital right if you are copying directly and writing it there is a violation of the copyright and it's coming under the plagiarism thing etc so in open sources as i have already mentioned 27 lakh for 40, 40, 37, 40, 43, lakh, 76,478 uh, books are available and every minute 50 books are added to the databases, etc. This shows the caliber and efficiency of uh, online e-resources which we are having in our day-to-day -day activities which are provided to you or to us by different digital mode or electronic mode. This particular slide here, lots of web resources are there, websites are there. So the first two are Directory of Open Access Journal and Directory of Open Access Books. Directory of Open Access Journal is the biggest one, largest and biggest uh, online open source uh, database, you can say that, through where you will get the maximum number of literature on e-journals, etc. And that is the books here also, you will get thousands of books, lots of books, uh, which you can download properly. So these two specs exclusively will be shown by Dr. Brinder Pal in the live mode, demo mode, when he will present this paper and others are like Wikipedia, Elsevier, etc. Here also, these are also providing the online e resources. But the latest one, which is published in the month of May, will not get. If you are getting it, that information, only the uh, bibliographical information will be available. And if you want to, if you are a member of some consortium where these resources are available, then you can go through that and you can download it. Download it. Otherwise, you have to write to them, they will ask you some money, they will have to pay through the uh, this credit card or debit card system, then they will send you. To your mail or something like that but old one suppose uh, in the month of january in the month of in the year 2019 that can be accessed in full text mode also the old one etc so this is the continuation of this same thing here uh, you can go through it after the class and you can access such type of things so here see directly of open access i have already mentioned this is uh, online uh, in this care online here you will get the scientific journal this one here you will get the scientific journals scientific uh, journals in proper way and related to uh, science and technology engineering it's a nptl program is there in nptl program also will get lots of resources being available you will get uh, uh, under uh, uh, what you can say say under so books program you will get lots of uh, the the under this uh, various uh, your igno sites you will get it you will get in the, under this uh, uh, New Delhi, that NCRT sites, you will get it. So lots of documents are there in NCRT site. Uh, you will get for the schools, you will get for the high secondary levels, etc. So Igno e resources, this one, this one, Igno e resources, it is called e -Gyan course. Under e -Gyan course, you will get lots of self-learning material in the electronic form, digital form, which you can download and you can use it. This is good for the high secondary level schools as well as degree level and 
PG courses are being offered. That means whatever the courses are being offered by Indira Gandhi National Open University, the self-learning material, all the courses are there. Nowadays, they have just restricted it because earlier it was easily accessible by anybody. Now, some higher media, you have to go there and uh, you will get some information. At least earlier, when it was completely free, it was showing the misuse of that. People were downloading it and misusing in this way or that way, etc. And next, next is uh, that www.pdf.drive.net. That this is the site where you will get so 27, uh, 27 crore 43 lakh. This figure is just only symbolic. This figure goes on changing every now and then. And this site claims that 50 books are added every minute. And this is the website where you can easily search the information through title and author mode. This is one of the best sites for the books. So this, this is scores of information. Now you can go whether the information needed by you there or not, you can find yourself. And these are some of the useful websites to support the education, education system during this uh, and pandemic period. You can say that the first one and the last one are very, very important. The first one is khanacademy.com and the last one is baijus.com. These two advertisements are every day. Today also it is being shown the different channels of the televisions, uh, satellite televisions, etc. So these are imparting different types of training. Others are also there. So these are imparting different types of training, training and uh, different types of courses like engineering courses, medical course courses, and uh, management courses, then uh, preparation for uh, your uh, talent examinations, like that type of things are being provided by this type of things. And there are many professors, many uh, experts who have designed and prepared the PP, uh, sorry, YouTube channel and they are making it available to the YouTube channel, different courses like SELA, the uh, association who is providing this platform to us. SELA is having their own channel. You can go to SELA channel, uh, YouTube channel, and you can see what the SELA is doing and what they are also putting the online courses there. You can have some additional information related to that. This is related to the books, electronic books. And here, Project Gutenberg, this vendor part of the part will show you in detail what is inside the Project Gutenberg and how it is accessed, how it is useful. Then he will also highlight our national digital library, ndl.iitkgp.ac.in, and directory of open access books, etc. He will show you in detail national digital library of India. He will show the live demo of that. Here, I am just showing you the only this is only for creating awareness among you. So here I am so giving you the theoretical information that practically it will be shown to you by Dr. Pal. Uh, these are some books, related books. Many sites are there. You can access it and you can get the information on that. This is related to the university information like state university. So all the universities in India also having this type of links, etc. You can access that type of things in your coming days. This is the question and answer type things. In question and answer, you can, what is your question? What is your answer? This is just like the frequently asked question, etc. You can have, go and have a look on that and you will be able to access that type of things. This is some site search engine sites like we are using uh, Google, we are using about.com, we are using Hotbot, we are using uh, altavista.com. These are all Interesting, sir. Can you hear me, sir?
संजय सिंह सर संजय सिंह सर कैन यू हेयर मी सर Anupam Dutta sir, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you, but I cannot hear Dr. Sanjay. Yeah, we have lost. I think connection with Singh sir. So, whenever he will join, we will connect with him. Yes. Should we move to the next speaker? Just uh, one. Give me just few seconds. Uh, Uh, Dr. Sir. Yes. Yes, yeah, just I have connected with Professor Singh sir, and he has there is a network problem in his area. So he's trying to connect. He had asked to give one minute. Okay. After that, if he should not connect, then we will continue to the next program. Okay. Okay. Yes, Professor Singh has been uh, connected now. Yes. Professor Singh sir, I think you can you can hear me. Singh sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Just uh, let me upload this. Share okay. the slide. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it is visible. I think. See. Yes, yes, now visible sir. Visible. Yeah, visible. No? Let me do that particular slide. Yeah, just we are end of this. Uh, just hardly two minutes, three minutes. I will take. So as I was talking about the different. Uh, uh, this and we are using this Google sites or that any search engines. This is for uh, online e uh, This is who's who of the world, and uh, you find any information about any personality, you will get this under these sites. And the news, etc. Sometimes, or any news, CNN news, etc. In India, also we are having different news channels, even the printed newspapers. So, at the beginning of this lockdown period, so some of the online platforms have started sharing. You started sharing these e-resources, newspaper, etc. And later on, it was discontinued when the newspaper is because violation of the digital rights, etc. These are some of the information related to medical information, medical information sites. Well, you will get the information related to doctors, health, etc. These are the sites where you will get the information. These are related to the uh, sports, etc. You will get information related to the sport in this. This is South Ganga. Activities of again services of implement center. This is open thesis, and this is open access thesis dissertation in South Ganga. As I mentioned, that uh, uh, two lakh seventy thousand uh, full text thesis are available, so you can access from there. And this is the uh, uh, 7,600 synopsis are available, and 440 universities are covered under these schemes, and 5,200 cases are there before pandemic period, and 511 universities are signed. 
and this is just few examples of online platform through which we are imparting it and just to end at the end uh, this some, there are some visions of this so there is an obstacle in all the work we are going to do so the obstacle are in the form of a lockdown whatever we call it so change is inevitable we have to accept the change and you have to march forward during this change period and uh, whatever, whatever you are doing you are in your comfort zone so here i mean to say that you all of you should come out from your comfort zone and uh, let us all enjoy what we are or what we have uh, in coming days and don't wait for the success the time is changing so success in the is in the other side of your comfort zone this is the message which i want i wanted to share here so just to conclude here as in the beginning also i have already told you think globally act locally long has to many things this is a simple which of e resources are increasing day by day and which is very very important for all of us so during this lockdown period in the coming days what you have to do how we can nurture our strength we should have some proper planning so that's why everybody can have their personal planning levels so these four points are important for all of you that what you need to learn what you need to learn uh, why you are, why you need to learn it how you are going to learn it and what is the time frame to learn it this is the most important part by okay but if you adopt these things in the future you will find that you are in the successful side of that and and then, then during the lockdown this is the message only it is the best investment you will ever make during the lockdown period and this e resources you should start using e resources you will get lots of degree you will get know how to use it in day to day activities and by doing so you can teach your student also you can guide your students also to use the e resources which are available in the online resources so see we are talking about the technology changing technology etc but uh, today one time it has been again disconnected by this technology when the power problem is there where net network connectivity is poor then you cannot do such type of online learning resource etc so anyway we have to depend upon this uh, this technology that is basically electricity and network connectivity etc so that is one of the two important things of so government to take care of electricity as well as connectivity connection so that it should not bring disturbance during the classroom so thank you very much now dr brinder pal will take care of the things which i have shown you theoretically he will show give you the live demo of such type of things and i'm sure that all of you will be benefited from this his presentation and his deliberations so thank you all thank you the principal of the college thank you the ipsc sales thank you dr anupamata my friend prashant deka brinder pal sir kalita and everyone who is watching this program enjoying this programs thank you and i hope we will prosper in the direction thank you very much thank you uh, professor sanjay kumar singh for this nice presentation it's a fairly comprehensive take on how we have moved from traditional modes uh, of knowledge exploration to through electronic modes in the past few decades to the present digital and online modes and how technology has come to play a significant role in uh, helping knowledge exploration he has effectively pointed out uh, the large amount of resources that are available on the web for the teachers and academics to explore and he has also given very useful information on uh, the sources of digital resources uh, available on the web and i'm sure that uh, all the participants uh, must have been greatly benefited by this nice present presentation so once again i extend warm thanks uh, to professor sanjay kumar singh uh now we are moving to the next uh, speaker uh our next speaker is a person who is technically very well equipped as far as the use of online resources in teaching learning and research is concerned he is uh, dr kirender pal dr pal is presently serving as uh, the librarian of kolya popper college uh, before joining this college he also served as uh, uh in the same capacity in hukwa uh, khana college for 5 years and uh, dr pal uh, obtained his doctorate degree from gauhati university he has made presentations in uh, many national and international conferences and has published a number of research papers uh, one of his major areas of interest is online resources so obviously he is the right person to uh, be a resource person in this particular webinar i welcome him and uh, may i request may i now request dr pal to give his presentation dr pal thank you thank you dr anupam dr sir it's a very right, nice introduction but i don't know how much i deserve because i am amongst you and whenever i am 
facing our academic fraternity it's a great honor for me to meet everyone because to meet academic fraternity in a open platform it's very difficult because everyone we are engaged in our own colleges but when we meet in this way it's a really great honor for me and for us also so basically in my presentation today i will show some of the things like demo on some of the important uh, websites like we'll be talking about swayam then we'll be talking about swayam prabha then we'll be talking about national digital library of india we'll be talking about ETG Patshala, and we'll be talking about South Ganga, and at last we'll be talking about Analyst, and at the utmost last we will uh, see what are the open access key resources available with us, and I will also try to some of the school resources which might be helpful for the school community. So I'm just sharing my screen. Since my screen is visible, since Professor Singh sir, Deka sir, okay, Anupam Deka sir, my screen is visible. It's it's not visible to me. I'm I'm not viewing any screen at all. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. yes, Virender, visible, na? Ah, visible, visible. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello. So this is the first of all. I will show you the platform of Swayam. So it is a platform of e-learning where we can not only learn but also there is a provision of certification. Respected honourable all the participants in earlier India, what happened? There were some e-learning portals where we can only learn, but there was no any provision for certification. But after Swayam came, then this uh, issue was resolved. Although NPTEL was there to provide certification in their courses, but after Swayam, this uh, issue has been resolved, and now whatever the courses are available, not only you can learn but also you can go for different courses available that time with certification. I will show you basically now what actually Swayam means in a simple way. What we want to understand. That from class nine to class fourth graduation level, you can access the learning materials. You can do the courses through this time. And see, there are four quadrants in time. That means you can understand there is a four part while we are learning. That is the one is video lecture, another is the text material which is created by the experts, then self assessment materials, and for one is the discussion forums. Four part comprises the four quadrants, and there are nine national coordinators appointed by MHRD to run the courses in the time. Suppose AICT is running the courses for technical education. National program for technology and learning is running the courses for engineering background. Similarly, UGC for C, which gives you a CC for undergraduate. In this way, all the bodies are working on their own, their own domain to provide the different learning materials along with the certification system. So this is the school education, out of school education, undergraduate education, and postgraduate education. These are the bodies which are working under this domain. And as per the participants, the interesting part of this one is that Ministry of Human Resource Development has already provided the guideline how to get enrollment to the MOOC courses or joint courses, and you can. Not only you can do the courses from other institution, but the mark sheets or the marks which you got, you can also transfer to your own university. There is a guideline. The guideline is already uh, given a credit framework for online learning courses through Swayam Regulation 2016. And in this guideline, the guideline specifically said this has to be incorporated by the universities, provided your own universities should accept this guideline. Similarly, UGC has also given this guideline to the universities. AICT has also given this guideline to the universities to incorporate that joint courses into their mark sheets. Now, if Our faculty members want to develop some MOOCs courses. There might be some questions in your mind that I want to develop some MOOCs courses which should be uploaded in Swayam. So there are these guidelines are available, guidelines for developing online courses for Swayam. And if you go through these guidelines, then you will understand better that what you have to do, how you have to proceed, what are the technical requirements. And for this, you can uh, go through these documents, which will definitely help you in this regard. And at the last, I will show you the mobile app which you can also download for Swayam. You can download this also from your Google Play Store. So this is all about basic information about Swayam, and I will show you the all courses. What are the courses that are available under Swayam? It will be coming in this uh, menu. And now you see there will be two main menus. One will be the upcoming courses, and another is the ongoing courses. The name itself indicates upcoming courses, the courses which are going to be conducted in future, and the ongoing courses which are being conducted at present. Now the difference is that if you are going for upcoming courses, you have to enroll for the particular courses. Suppose if you want to go do a course on plan group that is that is conducted by Dr. Arun Kumar Mitra, and it will be started from 31 5 2020. Then you just go to this uh, course and you have to join this course. Just you have to join this course. Before joining, you have to also sign in in the Swayam. How to sign in in the Swayam? I will show you. If you want to join these courses, then you have to go to this option and you have to join the courses. The descriptions are already given there. You can follow these descriptions from here. Similarly, there is another option called completed courses. Now, what is this completed courses? That means ongoing courses means this is the ongoing courses. Ongoing courses means you cannot enroll for these courses, but you can use the learning material, you can use the educational uh, document, you can use the uh, videos, you can use the text materials which has been used during the courses for your learning purpose. These are the courses which is already completed, but you can use the learning materials for your purpose. This is the 
all about the swan courses this is the national coordinator what i have found during this uh, 909 national coordinators have been appointed by msrd and now the basic important thing which i want to basically focus through this live demo is that swan is not only limited to english language but it has been also extended to other languages of india many languages what we can say bengali gujarati hindi kannada malayalam marathi tamil and telugu so you can go and explore all these courses under the nttl platform these courses are available and so you can access these courses according to your requirement now i will go to the next part this is the completed courses again again the name itself indicates that this courses have been completed in swam now you can use this resources for your learning purpose you select any of this uh, discipline and you see the learning materials you can use it for your learning purpose so there are videos there are assignments there are downloaded videos so in this way you can access it so the last thing i will show you the most important part which i want to say that during this covid situation let's covid 19 not stop your learning continue with swam now this is the thing we have to understand here there is two options if you are from engineering background you go to this option if you are from non engineering background then you go to this option even ncert textbook can also be downloaded from this platform suppose i will show you the non engineering background and then you see if you are from post graduate level then you can go and access to this discipline this subjects and if you are from under undergraduate disciplines or subjects then you can go for this learning materials now here thing is that you cannot enroll yourself for a particular course it is only for your learning purpose if you for your educational purpose you can use the learning material suppose i need some uh, what to say learning materials on suppose uh, cell biology then you go to this option cell biology and under the cell biology you just select your model what you need suppose cell situation and in this way see, this is the pdf file you can access it similarly i will show you another example suppose human rights in india and if you want to access the content of the human rights then you go to this introduction to national human rights and under this see, there is a text that means it is a learning material in textual format prepared by the expert and you can download it for your learning purpose similarly there is also self learning material self learning materials in the videos you can watch this video and you can learn by your own also dear students welcome to week 1 module 1 on the national human rights protection system we will take up this notion of human rights and also its significance so this is all about different courses moreover there are different courses you can access like in education like on public policy public policies community research organic chemistry research ethics in this way you can go and access and you can see whatever you need according to your interest so this is all about swam where you can access this courses you can access this learning materials now again see, i will not go details about this ict initiative but mhrd has already guideline given this guideline or given the uh, guideline to the ugc and ugc has also forwarded this guideline to the colleges and universities that these are the major things that are going on some of the big projects like swam whatever i have shown like swam provide here national digital library is there etg parsala is here so ganga is here for thesis e so chindu is there for e journals e in yantra is there for engineering for better tomorrow that force is there for open source software spoken tutorial is here again virtual labs to do science experiments basically for high level So in this way, different uh, initiatives has already been taken by MHRD in the field of online education. What we say, so you can go and access to these resources also, which may be beneficial to you. Just we have shown only the one part that is Swam. Now I will cover the next part called Swam Prava. Respected participants, you might be aware about this Swam Prava. The name has quite similarity with Swam, but there is a difference between Swam and Swam Prava. Swam was a e-learning portal where you can do. the e learning courses with certification now what is swam prabha swam prabha is a group of 32 dps channels that means there are 32 dps channels at your home sitting at your home you can watch these educational videos in your television set that if you have dvd disc at your home if you have this tv at your home then you can access these channels through your television set but right now this facility is not available in the tata sky and the airtel tv only it is available under dvd disc and this tv and i will show you the channels allocation how the channels allocation has been done see there are 32 channels and one channel number 1 to 10 are managed by cec and ec for the undergraduate courses similarly channel number 11 to 18 are managed by nctel for the pg and engineering courses similarly channel number 19 to 20 are managed by high school students for iit delhi so channel number 23 to 24 are managed by igno in this way all the channels have been allocated to the different levels of education you can go and access it suppose i will show you for example if you are from social science background just click this any of the channels then it will lead to a next phase 
and in this what you can see this see these are the current programs which are going right now live on the television set uttar gaya har baat mera ka shasan these are the programs which are going right now live on the television and if you want to see the repeat time suppose if you have missed somehow this program at one time on the same day you can also watch the same program on the same day at another time that means this programs are repeated many times you can say the timings are already there you can get the information from this swain prabha portal swain prabha what i am showing is now is the swain prabha this is a portal maintained by internet center where you will get the information regarding the educational videos which are going to be telecasted in your television so mhrd channel in this tv these channels are available from 2001 onwards in this tv these channels are available from 2001 onwards under mhrd and if you want to know more about this uh, there is also an option uh, upcoming if you want to see the upcoming programs you can go to this option if you want to watch the archived videos that means those videos which are already been telecasted and if you want to access these videos so this portal then you can also access this so the videos are available now suppose if, if you want to uh, explore these videos just go and just play So I not play any of the videos. Just my intention is just to make aware about these resources. So this is all about Swayam Prabha. And there is a frequently asked questions. In the frequently asked questions, most of the questions you will find here because most of the answers are already defined here. So you can go and access to the frequently asked questions that will help you to know or to understand Swayam Prabha better. And there is an option called registration. Now why registration is important? Registration is important in Swayam because. If you want some SMS alert regarding your interest of the program, then you can go and register here. Once you register here, then automatically the email or SMS SMS alert will be sent to your mobile number, and you can get the information, the timings of the different programs. These are the frequently asked questions. You can go and you can access to the frequently asked questions from here. What is Swayam Prabha? Whether Swayam and Swayam Prabha is same? No. So in this, the different answers are already defined, and you can access to these answers. And there is no any certification in Swayam Prabha. If you are watching the program, that does not mean that you are getting any certification. This is all about Swayam Prabha. So we have learned respected participants. So I am. We have learned Swayam Prabha. And one important thing I mentioned to forward in Swayam, Swayam is an e-learning portal with certification. There is the option called sign in option in Swayam now. Now why the signing option? Option is important. First of all, for the first time, if you are going to access the portal under Swayam, then you go to the sign in option and you log in using your Gmail account or Google account and then Facebook account. It is not. It is not required that you should create any account in Swayam. You can use your existing Google account. You can use your existing Facebook account and you can access the courses. Now, respected participants. So login into Swayam does not means that you are enrolled for a course. Login into Swayam means that you have been login to the Swayam to access the information related to the courses. But if you want to join the courses in Swayam, then you go to this option or any of the courses, and then you have to enroll for the particular courses. There is two process. First of all, you have to sign into the Swayam using your Google account, using your Facebook account, and then second option is that you have to go and you have to choose your courses, upcoming courses, or and you have to join here now. So this is the second process. So this is all about Swayam. Respected participants, this is all about Swayam Prabha. It is a group of 32 DTS channels. Now I will be moving to the next part of my. Live demo that is called National Digital Library. In short, what we call NDL. And National Digital Library of India is another great project of Amitabh done by IIT Kharagpur. Even our Guwahati IIT is also part of it. Some nodal center. And first thing I will show you how to customize your language according to your requirement. Suppose you need the entire platform to be in Assamic language, then you go and just customize the language. Yes, sir. Suppose you want to learn language, Bhaka, Logi language. So in that way, you can customize the language according to your requirement. And for the first time. You have to log in to the NDL platform, and you have to register. If you don't, if you don't have any account in NDL, just you create an NDL account. You go to the registration, and you fill up this online form. It will take hardly 30 to 40 seconds. After filling up this online form, then you will get an activation link in your email ID. The email ID which you have submitted during the registration. Once you activate your registration ID, then you can log in with your that particular ID. So, see, I will now log in with my particular ID, which I have already created earlier. Now I will be shown as Brim Dhawan here. The respected participants. Now I have been logged in as Brim Dhawan. And what is the benefit of this login is that without login also you can access the resources. But some of the resources you may not download. For this login is important in in the National Digital Library platform. If you are from school education, you can go to these options. If you are from engineering background, you go to these options. Suppose you are from science background, then you just go to these options. Under these options there are different disciplines. Suppose I will show you mathematics. In the mathematics you will get questions and solutions. You will get the web courses under NPTEL. The video lectures which has been used during the NPTEL courses you will get these videos here. The video lectures means faculty contributions. All these learning materials are available here. You just go and then access according to your requirement. Similarly, I have the thing. I will show you. So the ideal platform is that you can find the journal articles, you can find the e-books, you can find the different learning materials which is available under the National Digital Platform. And the basic concept of National Digital Library is that the National Digital Library is not a single entity. It is the National Digital Library which is bringing the resources from all the digital libraries of India available in the different places of India, 
and it is giving from a single platform. These resources which we are accessing now, we are not accessing. We are accessing the platform. We are accessing from the platform of NDL, but these resources are physically we are bringing out from the platform of the particular universities or particular institute. Suppose some resources are available in Jadavpur universities. So it is not our concern to go to the Jadavpur university digital library. Just you come to the NDL platform, and if they have the resources linked with the Jadavpur university, then these resources can be accessed for the NDL platform. So this is the basic concept of NDL. NDL has been created with this objective. And there is an option respective participants for frequently asked questions. This frequently asked questions will definitely help you to know more about this NDL. What is NDL? How you can be benefited? And the basic advantage of NDL is that if you are from institute, suppose if you are having a college, then try to appoint an institutional nodal officer in your college. What institutional nodal officer will do? The institutional nodal officer will collect the informations of the users, collect the informations of the faculty members, collect the informations of the students like their name, their email ID, and they will send to the NDL, and the account will be created for the institution. Now, respected participants, what will be the benefit of institution users? If I am getting an institutional membership, the major benefit of institutional membership is that some of the publishers like Springer Publishers or any other publishers may not give access to the resources to the general members, even if you are logging. But if you are taking an institutional membership to NDL, then these resources might be available to you for downloading. So this is the major advantage of institutional membership. Institution must appoint this institutional level level officer who will work and who will try to collect the information to the users and will be communicated with the NDL people. So this is all about NDL. Now I will be move to the next part called ETG Parsala. Respective participants, ETG Parsala is another e-learning portal maintained by Inclusionet Center, where you can also access to the different learning materials available here. There is some problems. Let it come. I will show the next. Yes, there is a problem with the website ETG Parsala. Now under this ETG Parsala, the learning materials like videos, text, what I have shown in the slide, this can also be uh, viewed through this. ETG Parsala platform. Once this platform will be available, I will definitely try to show you to here. So I will move to the next part called Swain Prava. It's not Swain Prava. This was Ganga. Sorry. So Ganga. Respected participants, this is our. Uh, platform where we can download the different thesis of the different universities of India. If you want to access the full text content of the thesis, then you can download from the website of Sodanga. You just go to the website of Sodanga and you browse the different universities which are available in the platform. Right now, if you see from Assam itself, then you will find Gohati University, you will find Assam University. This is the Gohati University, I will show you. There are 5,375 thesis already been uploaded. And you can access the full text of the thesis for this Sodanga platform, which is one of the important platforms in the open access mode. So this is all about Sodanga. You can access this. Resources for the for the platforms. I will just show one of the examples. Suppose you are from the Department of English, and you go to this option, Department of English. Then all the titles of the thesis, along with the researchers and the guide, will be from maintenance. So to figure out any of the thesis, any of the researcher or any of the guide, just only for the awareness program. So these are the different thesis which has been uh, awarded by the Goa University in the Department of English, and these thesis are already uploaded in the for the platform. You can go and you can access the full. Text of this thesis. Suppose you need the chapter one conclusion, bibliography, or any of the things, then you can go and download it for your academic purpose. So this is all about the Ganga platform. Now I will move to the next important part, and which is very important for the colleges because we are using these resources, and this is already available to us. This is called Endless Resources. Endless Resources is also a facility of Inclusionet under MHRD. It is a college component of East Coast Hindu. It is an East Coast Hindu consortium where you will get access to more than 6,000 plus journals, and there are more than 31 lakh e-books. That means. More than 31 lakh e-books are available now. Basically, respective participants, if you are faculty members or if you are students, then what they have to do? They have to contact their librarian or their library staff or any other member who is handling the endless account in your college. And then you have to go to the option login. First, what the person will do before going to the option of login, the library staff will create a endless account for you. Once the endless account is created, for creating the endless account. They will ask about your email ID, your name, and the basic informations, and a activation link will be sent to your registered mail. After that, what the users have to do? Users have to activate his account from his registered mail, which he has submitted during the time of registration to the librarian, and then he has to activate his account and this account. Then, after the activation of the uh, and this account, you have to go to this option called member login option. Once he logs into this option, then the pro the work of members starts from here. If you have already the Uh, and this account with you, and if you have forgotten your password, you can also reset your password from this option. Forget password option. If you do not, or you don't have to go to visit the librarian to retrieve your password. You just go to the website of Endless, and you go to this option, forget password. You definitely your password will be retrieved. Now, for the first time since I am a new user, I will be logging to my Endless account. And see, in this Endless account, there are 
lots of e-resources. If you find the e-journals like American Institute of Physics, Annual Reviews, Economic and Political Weekly, Indian Journals are available, JSTOR, Oxford University Press, these are all the different reputable publishers from where the different e-journals are available. And similarly, if you want to see the cases of e-books, then see this is the Cambridge e-books, Ibri, Oxford Hindustan, Institute of South Eastern Studies, Oxford Scholarship, Stringer e-books is available, then in this case, case publications are available, Taylor and Francis, Negro Hill, all e-book libraries, South Asian archives. So different reputable publishers from different corners of the world are participating in the analyst platform. And how to search the e-book in the analyst, I will show you. Of course, you need a book on bioinformatics. Just go to this option, search option, you type here bioinformatics and you search it. Once you search it, then all the documents which are on bioinformatics will be shown here. You just click any of it, and then you can go, and you can go for this online access view. Three important things the user have to keep in mind while accessing your book, that you can download the book, you can read the book without downloading, and you can download the PDF chapter wise book. Suppose if you want to read the book directly online without downloading the book, then you just go to this option and the book will be shown here without downloading. This is the very famous book in the college libraries. You have to see this book. So this is the first option. Then this is the second option that is called download the book. And this is the chapter wise book. Chapter wise book means, suppose if you need only one chapter. Suppose you need this chapter only, bioinformatics introduction. Then you just click it. Then that particular chapter will be downloaded here. And you can save it for your academic purpose. So this chapter is already downloaded. In this way, you can download the different chapters according to your requirement. And to download the entire book, there will be the requirement of a third party provider that might be ebook reader. How to download this ebook reader and how to get your uh, ebook ID? I have already prepared a video on this and I will share this with you in my WhatsApp group. Uh, how to activate your analysis and how to download the entire book. Uh, it will be available to you in the WhatsApp group after this program. So, this is all about analysis where you will get more than 6,000 plus e journals and where you will get more than 31 lakhs ebooks. And these are already available in your colleges. Just to contact your librarian, they will definitely help you. There is an option called frequently asked questions. I go to this frequently asked questions, then present all the different doubts or all the different confusions. It will be clear to you. Again, I will show you one important point: is that not only you can search the book, you can also search the book by class number. Class number in your library, you might be observing that in every subject there is some numbers in the spine level of the book. Suppose if you are if you are from economics, then economic number is 330. If you just click 330, then the book from economics will be definitely shown here. If you are from suppose Organic chemistry, then you go to this option and organic chemistry number is 547. You can also search in this way also. There is also the facility of advanced search. If you are an advanced user or if you want to save your time in searching, then you can go and use this advanced searching facility available under the analyst facilities. So, this is all about different facilities which are available under analyst. And there's one important thing that is license agreement. License and fair use is very important from the user's point of view because it is the user who are using the resources. So, they have to also take care of this license and fair use, what they are permitted and what they are not permitted. It is already written here, so you can go and you can uh, follow these instructions according to your requirement. Because once you uh, violate these instructions, then definitely there might be some uh, issues and your account might be blocked. So you have to take care of all these issues and you have to make the fair use of your uh, all, all the all the entire online e resources which are available under NLIS. And suppose if you want to access how many colleges are using any facilities, then you can go to these options and you can get this information from this option. Suppose if you want to see the state wise list, you just go to the state wise list and you search here. Suppose in Assam, 131 colleges are being activated. My intention is not to figure out any of the colleges. Just if this is for information. You can collect this information from the website of the analyst. So, this is all about analyst facilities which is available under your college right now. So, you can contact your library staff and you will definitely be benefited with this resource. So, next, I will move to the next part of my live demo that is called open access resources. Respected participants, you might be aware about open access resources. Open access resources are the free resources. Yes, now before going to the open access resources, the EPG parcel, which was uh, I was discussing, but there was some technical error in the website of EPG parcel, which I could not show you. But I will try my best to show you now. See, this is the website of EPG parcel. This is also an e learning portal maintained by Inclinet Center, where you have to go to these students' corners now. Once you go to the students' corners, and if you want to access the different learning material, different learning material available under this platform, EPG parcel. Suppose you are from zoology. And you want to access some resources. So there are lots of subjects which have been under zoology. Suppose you want to access the animal physiology, and under animal physiology there are some contents. You can access any of these. Suppose you want to access some pituitary hormones, then you access it. This is the e-text. E-text means the PDF files in simple language. What I want to tell you, the textual material you can save it for your learning purpose. Prepare the experts on the particular area. The entire area has been prepared. Similarly, if you want to watch the videos, then also you can learn it, and you can learn by yourself. Module, you should be able to understand the functional areas of pituitary, describe the significance of median amines, 
know the importance of total capital taxes so my intention is not to play the entire video i can see there are lots of other subjects if you are from commerce you can also access if you are from law discipline if you are from management if you are from uh, human rights yeah, different disciplines according to your requirement you can go and you can access sociology population studies material science so in this way you can access these resources under the epg pathala platform respected participants we have discussed why and why is e learning portal with certification we have discussed when prova when prova is a group of 32 digital channels where you can enjoy the educational videos by sitting at your home through your television set we have discussed about national digital library where you can access the resources of the different, different digital libraries of india then we have discussed sobganga where you find the phd thesis we have discussed epg pathala where you find the learning materials in the form of text in the form of videos now we will move to the next part called open access open access resources are the resources which are freely available in internet in a layman point of view which what time is here now there are some websites of open access e resources i will show you one or two websites already professor sanjay swain sir has given in his presentation this is the directory of open access journals now respected participants you might be aware about the commercial journals and the open access e journals now the open access e journals which are available in the world it is not difficult for a person to remember each and every journal's name so what the person will do he will go to this website doaj and from this platform the entire open access journals is indexed in a single platform for example if you want to understand the concept of directory then suppose for example if a person wants to know the uh, all the universities of india then what the person will do he will not go in every university's website he will go to the ugc website and from the ugc website the entire university's website he can uh, he can communicate and he can get the information from the ugc website similarly the concept of doaj is that it is indexing all the open access journals available in the world into a single platform so that users will get the access of entire open access journals through a single platform So this is the concept of open access journals. You can download the open access research papers from these platforms. I will show you another website called so GOAB. Another this is earlier it was for journals. Now it is for books. Directory of open access books. You can download the open access book from this platform. All the open access books are can be accessed from this single platform. Another website I will show you respective participants. That is called Project Gutenberg, which is also one of the wonderful websites you can say for downloading entire books. You can go to this option and you can download this e-book from this Project Gutenberg. Similarly, there is an Another website called Internet Archive. You can go to this Internet Archive and you can also download the e-books under the digital library platform. So these are all about the open access e-resources. More about respected participants. Uh, for the sake of helping our school community, I will show you one or two websites which will definitely help our school community. We should communicate our message to the school uh, colleagues also because they are also in the same problems what we are facing now. So NCERT e-books. There is a facility. You just can download this NCERT book. Download from the directly from the NCERT website. so you just can go to this website and they will select the class which class suppose class 6 if you need any book on mathematics then you will select this and you will find this book and you can download the book particularly for its academic purpose i will not go to the detail to this just this is for the informations which i should i think that you should communicate another website i will show you is the dixia this is another great application also our honorable education minister has always been discussing about this application and it is very helpful for the school students so that the school communities can download this app and they can use the learning materials available under this platform So this is all about different e-resources which are available under the internet platforms. Now it's not that uh, it is only the final thing. This is only a list of the resources which we try to show you. Moreover, there are lots of e-resources which you might be also using. So I would like to conclude my presentation and over to Dr. Anupam Dutta. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh... very much dr virender pal for a wonderful presentation uh dr pal has given a very systematic demonstration of how different online and digital resources on the web can be accessed he has also given fairly comprehensive information on the different digital and online platforms that we can utilize uh once again thank you very very much for a wonderful presentation uh i think now we can take a few questions from the chat box i have noted down a, few, a couple of questions uh can i read out the questions so that uh, yeah. the resource persons can uh, take up the questions and answer okay uh there is a question from sapna das and she asks can a student take credit from the courses available in the swayam platform yeah yes it can take There is the credit. Credit can be transferred in uh, their syllabus course. 
suppose uh, take the example in pg classes uh, i am citing about brinder will also talk on that uh, that value added courses are there open courses are there so instead of value added courses open courses if you are uh, joining any course but you have to clear the course and uh, you have to gain the certificate then only the credit will be transferred and regarding degree brinder will tell you brinder bolo yes yes hello uh, yes actually uh, credit transfer this guideline is already available but if you are doing from some colleges some courses but your affiliated university should allow this there should be provision in your affiliated universities so that your marks can be included in your particular college or institute okay main in credit and grading system there is a semester system is going on by the different in what university as a different university so as per the provision guidelines of guwahati university also it can be transferred okay sir that's good then okay so the next question is uh, from vikas das it's a fairly broad question he asks what are the ways in which uh, we can make an online class more effective online class more effective yes yeah and up to you see the there are floods of online courses are going on online classes are going on online webinar seminars and webinars are going on so you have to choose and you just select the topic in which you are interested and uh, should be particular in that field you should not be suppose uh, there are many instances i have seen at a time a uh, person is attending two to three webinars at the same duration same time so it should not be like that so we used to say do the bhrit now dile now to do we jai so it should not be like that so you should select the area select the topic and uh, then you go so just uh, there has already shown you regarding the swim platform course mooks courses etc so you can take the uh, you can utilize that type of course and it will really useful for all of you because many subjects are covered there and you will be able to do justice with that that is uh, one of the important suggestion we can give you from here anything else brender you want to add you can add it uh actually the online education is because we have to promote the awareness also with uh, re- with online education awareness is very important and online education is now a part of it nowadays because we are also going and moving towards this and we have to be very much comfortable with the online tools and techniques what we have to understand now like we are now conducting this platform zoom similarly we have google classroom so we have to be very much comfortable and we have to also create the online courses before because technology will definitely uh, somehow they will manage but what are the main thing of the technology is the content who will create the content because it will be us we teachers community with academic fraternity will creating these courses and i think uh, content is the main uh, thing in a technology without content the technology is just a uh, once empty box i could say so we have to focus on those areas also to content creation and for this we have also arranged some courses we will declare at the end part of this uh, seminar thank you okay thank you uh, then uh, there are two questions from shilpi datta mazumdar the first one is uh, she asks can the institutional nodal officer be any faculty member or only the librarian i think she is asking about analyst no 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 any 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 person any, any. any person like then is say library associated associated with such type of course programs etc so is him the things so in that case if librarian is a very talented one and he is able to handle it accesses and i i would a generation almost all librarians are of that nature so he can do it otherwise there is no fast hard and fast that only librarian will take any person can take it but in general it is seen that librarians are doing much better in compared to other what i have seen in my practical life but anybody can take it it depends upon the committee okay uh, there is a second question yes. from shilpi datta mazumdar and she asks can some incentives be arranged for maximizing usage uh, by by enlist users both students and teachers no 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 see already incentives are given by the infinite center indirectly to all of you if you want to procure that document purchase that document you have to pay 40000 plus rupees but you are paying only 5000 rupees and you are able to access uh, 6000 plus journals and uh, 31 lakh plus uh, 30, sorry 30 lakh plus ebooks and besides that many resources made available by the internet center which are very very useful 
So that is also one type of incentives that you are not paying 40,000 plus rupees for that. And earlier it was before 2018, up to, 30, uh, up to 31st March 2017, it was completely free. Nothing was, you were, no, no college, no university was paying anything to the implement also. So now they are charging simply 5,000 rupees plus uh, GST as a membership fee, uh, registration fee, you can say that. But uh, it is a negligible amount in today's context where, where we are having informations are very costly, it is not easily available. So in that case, so in that way, incentives are there. You can say that. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a request from Dr. A. K. Srivastava. Uh, he wants something on plagiarism. Yeah. What What do you want on plagiarism? Just can you can uh, you please, says, please, please give something on plagiarism? See, plagiarism uh, under UGC, we are having Sodh Siddhi program. If you go to the www.ugc. Uh, sorry, infinite.sc.in, you will get the Sodh Siddhi. So under that activity, uh, we can check the plagiarism. We are not saying the plagiarism, we are saying the similarity report. So at present, uh, we are using the Urkun software. But there are many softwares are there, like Turnitin, Authenticate, these are all important software, Urkun's. And if you go to the online platform and you can just write on the Google that anti plagiarism software, you will get hundreds and thousands of software, but free of. But free software cannot detect detailed information. At present, the UGC has prescribed and you are using under the UGC guidelines and through the Implement Center Urkun software where you can access it. And through this platform, I can just tell you if any of the teacher wanted to want to uh, test their uh, write up or article before submitting to the uh, any publishing house, you can send it to me, to my mail, I can check it and I can give you to your mail and you will be able to know how much simulated report is generated, 10%, 2%, 3% as well as, as well as, but you should know as per the UGC guideline, 10 up to 10% of the similarity index is acceptable. If it is 10% and less, then you are excused. But if it is more than 10%, then certain criteria are there, certain guidelines are there. If it is 20%, 30%, 40%, you go to the site, you will get in detail information about that. Even your paper can be cancelled, you will be put under the bar as per the Copyright Act or Digital Right Act or the violating the plagiarism norms, etc. If you are in the service, you may lose the service also. There are various and many instances where the even the vice chancellor of university is being suspended. They are suspended from their jobs, etc. by adopting such action. So it is not a simple thing, though it seems very simple plagiarism, but it is a very, very dangerous thing. So that's why in my presentation, I have told you that you read, tell your student to read the literature, read the information from the website, or anybody can read it, download it, use it, but don't copy it directly. You read it and write in your own language and cite Give the citation to that. Then there is no uh, uh, this plagiarism for that. But if you are copying directly, not citing etc., it is a gross violation of this copyright, copyright digital right as well as well as the plagiarism, and will be put behind the bar for that. I will not name any of the agencies. One one of the let me cite institution. Let me tell. It is something else. Let me cite the example institution. One of the institution has adopted the digital copy, copying of digital things in Guwahati itself. And uh, there was a this complaint because nowadays we are in the satellite television mode and satellite everything is there, social media mode, etc. That was detected, and that organization has to spend crores of rupees in Guwahati itself. I don't want to take any name. You don't ask me also name, okay? But uh, then was materialized. These type of things are going on. So be careful from such type of activities. You knowingly, unknowingly, if you're copying anything, so you can test it. And for everybody, if you want to test one page, two page, we are having this online free plagiarism tools, anti plagiarism tools. You can download from the internet, uh, go to the Google and download it, and you can use it. But if you want the research, etc., then you have to better to use the renowned and accepted plagiarism, anti plagiarism tools for that. Okay, UGC has recommended Urkund. Any more thing you want to know about plagiarism? Okay, sir, please go on. No, I have told if you want more clarification, then... Hmm. Self plagiarism, uh, sir. Someone is, someone is asking about self plagiarism, sir. A self plagiarism. So, yes. you, have, you have published any paper, any research paper, and it is published in any of the renowned journal, and you think that it is my paper, so let me again write some of the paragraph from there and another paper. So, that is also violation of plagiarism. That is called self-plagiarism. So when you cannot copy your writing also, 
because once it is published, it is not your property. It is the property of that publishing house because you have signed a memorandum with this copyright. You have signed the copyright form and you have transferred your copyright to that person, to the publishing house, ABC, whatever the publishing house is there. Now that property belongs to the publishing house. Though you are the creator of that, though you are the author of that, though you are the owner of that, but even though you cannot copy it, it is self coming under self provision and same punishment will be there what you are copying from others also. Okay? So recently, sir, yes. UGC, UGC has also given a guideline regarding the self regression also. It has been very clearly yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it is clearly mentioned. Anything you are copying, even you are stealing the idea of a person, idea of a person that is coming under, uh, coming under idea of plagiarism. So many plagiarism, hundreds of types of plagiarism are there. You go to the uh, this uh, Google page and you will know how many different types of plagiarism are there, how many different uh, anti-plagiarism softwares are also there. You will know. But authentically, one of the best software at present today, if you ask me, it is Turnitin. Authenticate and Turnitin, it is the one best software which can give you the real information. Others are also there. Turnitin is very, very costly. It is not affordable. You cannot afford all institutions cannot afford it. And there are different prices for different organizations. But if you have Turnitin, then it is good. Otherwise, you have to use the whatever the UCI provided to us. That is good. Thank you. Next. Thank you, sir. Uh... There is one more, I think it's a question uh, from Kaushik Kumar Deka. If one's course content is approved for MOOCs, special body course, uh, can the creator, will the creator get financial assistance? No, so for that, uh, let me tell you one thing. On 4th of uh, June, we are going to organize that e-content creation and management, uh, this uh, webinar or training program, whatever you call it from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. And the main person behind the national figure who is looking after this thing under the guideline of UGC, that person is a resource person. He is going to uh, present his, uh, this give you the, uh, show you the training, content, how to play, how to do this thing, all details will be shown to And I think uh, it is better to see that program and, uh, and then you take your decision at present but what I can tell you, if it is approved, then there is a committee in the SWAM. And if they approve, then you will be getting the financial assistance. So up to 14 lakhs, one quarter, up to 14 lakhs of rupees, the institution can get if your uh, this program is selected. So everything will be shown directly. So I request all of you that all the teachers, teaching community fraternity can register. Uh, there's all the links are already provided. Even Brother Paul will again tell you about that where you will get the information. But it is different social media. We have given it, even the Facebook also it is given it. So you can all the willing person, not just for the sake of attending, let me attend it. It is it should, should not be like that because we are having limited seats. So all the intention willing person, those who are really interested to work for that, they can apply for that and uh, you will get the response from that. Okay, and you will be able to, I'm sure that you will be able to write the program for and will bring glory for your institution in that regard also. I think that's why I'm not going to answer it fully. And you first attend it and you will Okay, anything Thank more? You, Thank you, sir. There is one more question on in similar lines. Can a college get grants for purchasing e-resources? Please guide. This is from Shilpi. No, it depends on grant from where you will get the grants. Nowadays, college is having RUSA grant, college institution is having TENIF grant, institution is having UGC grants. From that grants, if it is year mark, then whatever the amount is, uh, it will give given to you. you can purchase. Just yesterday, I will not name the again uh, university, just I got a call from that university in the Northeast India. That college, uh, that university is given two crores of rupees, assigned two crores of rupees for purchasing of only e books, not the even e journals. So what they will do, so they were just discussing with me that uh, what should be done, what is the what should be the process, etc. As they have come to know that I am the librarian in charge of this KK Handic Library Guard University Library also. So they were discussing with me. So then accordingly, I have suggested what to do, what not to do, etc. Uh, that's why the grant will be given by the government, grant will be given by the EGC, grant will be given by the uh, Rusa grant, etc. So it is up to you which grant. But especially, uh, you have to write to write down, suppose you can write to NEC also, like to use you also to give the grant, etc. So, from where any source, when you are getting any grant, certainly you can utilize it. But again, one thing is very, very important while purchasing the ebooks or e journals, etc., because you are you are the user of uh, this endless program, you can access through the open source 
So when you are dealing business with the publisher, publisher or publishing houses, you should be very, very careful. You should be giving the guideline and terms and conditions should be in such a way that those books which are included in the analyst program, those books which are available in the open source, that book should be excluded in the list which you are going to purchase. Otherwise, you will be cheated. That is sure. So be careful while purchasing whatever amount, 10,000, 1 lakh, 2 lakh, whatever amount you are purchasing. So that certain times, terms and conditions, you can give it, then you will be in the safer side and better side. Otherwise, you will be cheated. And because if that, if that will duplication of the books, maybe e-books, whatever it is. So once you are getting there, another again you are paying for that. What is the use of that? Okay. Next. Thank you. Uh, so I think we have to taken up the questions. Yeah. Yeah, yes, we have one taken one up all the questions asked by the participants in the chat box. And uh, okay. then there are requests from, from several participants to provide them with the recording of this event. Is it yeah, possible? Yeah, 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 definitely. We will upload this recording in our official YouTube channel, ICTC LSE. Just give us some time. It will take, I think, okay. one week because we have to edit and we have to cut many of the things. So it will be available to you in the ICT channel of Assam College Librarians Associations. And also we will share with the uh, authority of with Bar Barba College so that anyone can access. Okay. Also, we will share in the WhatsApp group also. So it is not uh, okay. the issue. We will share it. And also one thing someone was highlighting regarding this uh, online test examinations. So how to conduct this online test along with the online educations. So for this, we are also conducting some seasons recently. We have conducted in Dishford Law College how to test online. Suppose in from Google Classrooms also or from the Google uh, Forms also, we can take at the initial levels, we can do this kind of small test. But it is not that it is the final test. But thing is that at the initial test, we can test our students. We can prepare some QGs with the students. Or also there are certain kind of online tools, facilities which are available. Definitely, we will try to make some videos on it. Definitely, it will help you. We try to go to our, our YouTube channel. I will try to make some videos how to uh, make some online test. And that will be definitely helpful for our uh, academic fraternity. We have already made some videos on Google Classrooms. We have made videos on Zoom, how to use Zoom. Also, we have made videos to how to conduct science practicals. So in this way, different videos we are trying to make and if you are also interested, we can, you can also contribute with us. Definitely, you will be welcome. Thank you. Okay. There is another question uh, coming in the chat box. I think this has been addressed uh, from Shahabuddin. Uh, MOOCs, are, MOOCs are provided free, but creation of content as study material is not free. The cost of creating the content can burden the universities with extra costs. Is there any mechanism to handle the financial requirement? I think this has been yes, addressed. Yes, then I told you, already told you up to 14 lakhs of rupees. So, the lakh takaloi, you just say divo. That's why you attend that program on 4th, you will get everything, all information. And you will know how to upload it, how to write, create the content. Because see, if you want to make a, this uh, audio video program of that, that means you need one laboratory, you need one studio. So, without a studio, you cannot do it. So, all sorts of things that he will talk on and he will guide you and uh, I suggest the person who has asked you the question, please suggest him uh, to attend that program and certainly he will be benefited from that. Or you can go to the uh, SOEM site and certain criteria guidelines are there, you can download the guidelines and you can see that. But uh, if the person who is directly activity is presenting in front of you, that will be far, far better than what I am speaking or what the printed material is or online material is showing. So you can listen him and then you can put him the question if uh, the time will allow us, etc. But even though through the chat box or through the email, you can access him. So I don't, I think that uh, when he will present, everything will be clear to all of you. Because he is person, he's the person looking after NIF ranking, he is the person looking after uh, this uh, uh, SOEM MOOCs program and many more activities of UGC behind the screen. So he is the main person for that. So certainly all of you will be very fitted there. And later on, I will conduct some more program. We will through the uh, ACLA by the help of uh, Dr. Teka and Dr. Pal, etc., so that uh, the colleges, university community, college community will be getting more benefit, and they will try to able to do justice to the student and do justice to, to their institution also um, by learning such type of things through the e-learning mode, etc. Anything more? Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you take one more question from Ankita Jain? There is one yeah. from Ankita Jain. They are also ready now. <laughs> In okay, that's test. one, one last question. Also... One last question. Yeah. Uh, what percentage of plagiarism is acceptable for PhD and M field dissertation? That's 10%. From Ankita below Jain. 10%. Below that. 10% below that. Person and below that, and if you want on that, so one day you can organize one tutorial on that, or this uh, webinar on that also. So, in the uh, this thing, I will talk to Vinder is already here, Prasant is already here. I will talk to him, and then one class we can organize that also uh, regarding the plagiarism, etc. Okay, at present, okay. less than 10. Okay, okay sir, thank you uh, very much. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for taking up the questions and answering them. I think to the satisfaction of our participants. So we have almost come to the end of this uh, webinar. And uh, just before winding up, uh, may I request the librarian of Borwa College, Dr. Kishore Kumar Kolita, to propose the vote of thanks. I have no Kishore. Sorry, they are not. Kishore. Kishore. Yes, Kishore. Please unmute yourself, Dr. Kishore Kolita. Yes. Yes. May, may I do one, sir? Yes. 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 Please go on. Thank you, Doctor Sir. Hello, everyone. Myself, Doctor Kishor Gurita, joint coordinator of this webinar. Express my privilege to confer put up thanks on this webinar. I, on behalf of Borbak College community and Assam College Library Association, and on my own behalf, extend our hearty put up thanks. To our college principal, Mamba Dimitri Raman sir, to inaugurate this webinar with his valuable viewers. Thank you, sir. A big thank you to Dr. Pasanta Kumar Daka sir, the General Secretary of SCLA, who accept my request and ready to conduct his webinar in my college, along with thanks for his valuable short piece. Thank you, Dr. Daka sir. I like to access our valuable foot of thanks to Professor Sanjay Kumar Singh sir, give his valuable time for his busy schedule. He described how knowledge is moving fast in this technological changing world from traditional system to artificial intelligence, unlearned to relearn. He also awarded us different sources of electric resources. I think from his piece, participants of this webinar definitely get benefited. A big thank you, sir. I may like to express our foot of thanks to Dr. Birendra Pal, who elaborates nicely live demo on different online resources platforms such as Soyam, Soyam Prabha, National Digital Library, etc., and how to access e resources from this platform. A big thank you to him for his full technical support to success of this webinar. Thank you, Virender. I refer my foot of thanks to Dr. Anupam Dutta, my joint coordinator of this webinar, for his continuous effort to success of this webinar. And last but not least, I refer my valuable thanks to all the participants to take part in this webinar from different parts of Assam and outside Assam. Thank you again, all of you. Now I make and put the put in place. Thank you, Yansi. Thank you, uh, Kishore. Thank you, Kishore. Uh, Thank you. Uh, let me now almost wind up uh, the webinar. Just before that, uh, I'd like to inform the participants that uh, the e-certificates for this webinar will be mailed to their respective email IDs the email IDs with which they registered for this uh, webinar. So their e-certificates will be mailed to their respective email IDs in a few days. Uh, and uh, the recording of this particular event will be available in the YouTube channel of uh, the ICT cell of uh, Assam College Librarians Association, as uh, Dr. Virendra Pal has already informed you. So you will get this, uh, the recording of this event. So uh, let me wind up the webinar. I once again thank you all for your presence and cooperation. And I formally declare this webinar concluded. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, thank you very thank much you. to all. Uh, the principal of the college, the IPSC sale, Dr. Brindar Pal, Dr. Patanta Deka, Dr. Kishor Kalita, and all the participants who are... Okay. Yes. So thank you. So I think the meeting is going to be end. We are going to end this meeting. And I also like to thank to all the honorable members of Borba College, including the principal sir, Mahmoud Antul Rahman sir, 
ডক্টর অনুপম দত্ত স্যার দ্য কোডিনেটর অফ আইকুইসি ডক্টর কিশোর কলিতা স্যার দ্য লাইব্রেরিয়ান অফ বড়বা কলেজ হু ইজ অলরেডি ওয়ার্কিং ভেরি হার্ড ফর দিস প্রোগ্রাম এন্ড দ্য এন্টায়ার একাডেমিক ফ্রেটার্নিটি অফ বড়বা কলেজ অল দ্য পার্টিসিপেন্টস উইড লাইক টু থ্যাঙ্কস টু ইচ এন্ড এভরি ওয়ান এন্ড উইথ দিস আই লাইক টু কনক্লুড দিস মিটিং থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ভেরি মাচ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ